Hallelujah. Amen means I agree. We want to be in his presence. And most of all, we want to be in his favor. How many need the Lord this morning? How many need him more than we've ever, ever needed him before? And he's given us an opportunity to seek his face in prayer right now. We're going to acknowledge the Lord to come by here and to meet our needs. Those with an unspoken prayer request, let's acknowledge by the raising of our hands. And let's, with all our heart, our soul, and our mind, let's all together seek the Lord. Our Father and our God, we thank you once again for your goodness and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us another day where your mercies have been new every morning. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. You've allowed us to wake up this morning and you've started us on our way. You've given us a mind to want to call on your precious name before our feet even hit the floor. God, we thank you, Lord, for most of all, you've given us a mind to want to assemble ourselves together. You know how much we need you, even when we don't know how much we need you. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. And as we're gathered, as we're assembled here again, we're asking, oh God, for this opportunity to come boldly to your throne, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Oh God, our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Only you can change. Only you can purify. Only you can cleanse. We're submitting ourselves to your will through your word. Let your word find us out. We're requesting a heavenly inspection from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet that you search us. We beseech, we pray, we, we plead for you to search us and know our hearts. Lord, don't leave us to our own understanding for all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyesight. Lord God, know our hearts. See if there be any wicked way in us. Lord, and lead us in the way everlasting. Lord, this, the whole world, as the word says, lies in wickedness. We don't want to be consumed. We don't want to be deceived with the deceitfulness of riches, Lord. Help us, oh God, to submit ourselves to your will, to your counsel as more than ever before. Increase our faith, for this is the victory that overcometh the world. We're stepping boldly into your world, into your presence, Lord, that you might fill our cups and let it overflow with goodness. Now, God, let your word be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. We stretch forth our hands, O oh God, that you might come by here in a mighty way. Let your name be lifted up in song, in testimony, and in prayer, that someone here, someone listening electronically might cry out and say, what must I do to be saved, God? We're here to exalt the name of Jesus. And we won't fail to give you all the honor. Hallelujah. We're here to give you all the praise and all the glory. For we can ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us remain standing at this time for our responsive reading. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Our responsive reading comes from John chapter 4, verse, starting at verse 10. Thank God that there's no other name that we can call upon. Let's thank God for all of his goodness and his mercies. Another day he has given us. And we are glad in it. Starting at verse 10, if you have it, say amen. Verse 10 reads, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and, we, and he would have given thee living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well? and drank thereof himself, and, had, and his children, and his cattle? But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, 
But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeketh such to worship him altogether. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank God for his goodness and keeping power. At this time, we'd like to welcome any first-time visitors. If you're a first-time visitor, we ask that you stand at this time so that we can acknowledge you. Amen. We're happy to have you all here with us. We pray that you enjoy this service. God bless you, and hopefully this isn't the last time we'll see you. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Just a reminder that we do record our radio, um, our services for our radio broadcast stations. And we kindly ask that everyone at this time, if you could silence your cell phones, minimize walking and talking during the word of God. Today, in addition to our regular offering, at the end of service, we'll be taking up our church expense fund. And at this time, we're going to prepare for our regular offering. We ask that both sides please rise, face the center aisle, and follow the directions of the center aisle usher. <laughs> Let's 
Yes, he is. Come on, church. Help us out. You are good. You are good. All the time. All the time. You are good. Hey. All the time. All the time. You are good. Come on, church. That's all right. Hey, come on now. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. He is rich in mercy. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Yes, it does. Come on, everybody. Sing it for yourself. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures How long? forever. People. Lord, you are good and your mercy endures forever. People from every nation. People from every nation. From generation to generation. What are we going to sing?
that somebody did not wake up this morning. And we just said, Lord, you are good. You woke me up this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. You may be seated. You may be seated. Tell me what you know about Jesus. The song says, Lord, you are good and your mercy endures how long? Come on, I need everybody. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth for how long? That's all right. Tell me what you know about Jesus. Now, now, I need an honest answer. How do you feel about Jesus this afternoon? Now, I'm not talking about how you felt on yesterday. I'm not talking about how you felt when you woke up this morning. I'm talking about how you felt when you entered the doors of his house. How did you feel this afternoon when you came to the house of God? Come on, I'm not talking to anybody this afternoon. But my God is not a dead God. My God is a living God. Yes! You know the good thing about my God? We don't serve a God of idols, of brass and of wood, a God that can't talk. My God talks to me. How did he speak to me? You woke me up this morning. Take some time out to praise the Lord. We can't let the devil continue to keep us pressed down and weighed down with the things of the world. You gotta have some joy every once in a while. You gotta have some pep in your step every once in a while. You know why? Because there's something about the name of Jesus. It'll make you feel good. I'm sorry. I don't know about you, but I love my God this afternoon. I love my God this afternoon. You know why I love him? He's just been so good to me. Been better to me than I could be for ourselves. You know how good God is? There were those times we wanted to give up on ourselves. We wanted to give up on our own selves. The person we feed every day. The person we clothe every day. We wanted to give up on ourselves. But that God that I serve would not. God says, no, don't give up on yourself, because I ain't gave up on you. says victory is mine victory today is mine you know, you know one of the things and you know I coach basketball and I told the guys they didn't take the game serious most of them until they got on the court I said it's not when you get on the court when you prepare for the game you got to prepare on your way to the game in the bus in the layup line you see the problem with us we want to wait for God to do something big in our lives before we get that energy and not clap and not pump and not, we want to wait on God instead of expecting God to move and we got to act like God has already done the thing that we've been praying for, seeking for, and crying for, and shouting for. We got to act like this is a rehearsal and I believe Let's proceed with testimony service. That's my testimony this afternoon. You know, they sing a song, he's that kind of friend. And that's my God sticking closer than any brother can. We're going to have those that submitted their names to testify. We're going to ask you come in order, Sister Poland. God is good when? And all the time what? He's coming. just want to thank God for his love, his mercy, his grace, his keeping power, his kindness, his long-suffering, his gentleness, 
him just holding on in spite of myself. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Uh, I'm just excited to be up here this morning. The song said it so perfectly. I'm just here to worship God because he is so good. Um, God's been better to me than I've been to myself. Definitely that's a very true statement. It's not just a cliche. He is that good. And I'm so thankful for being here for such a time as this. I'm thankful for being in this ministry. God's just... I want to still, Sister Shaquana, saying he's so personal. He takes our very thoughts and he even answers those. Sometimes we don't even pray it and we don't tell anybody. And he just, he sees our thoughts and he even answers those. And I'm just here today. Like, I don't have no big miracle, but I was thinking there, nothing, you know, ostentatious, but I am a miracle. I'm here in times like this. I'm here, and I can't take that lightly. Too many people don't have the mind to be here, and I'm here for myself. I'm here because I love the Lord. I want to see his face. I just want to be used by him. He's just so personal, and I just want to stand up and be a witness to that. God is so personal. He loves us more than we love ourselves. He loves our loved ones more than we love them, and he is just a kind, loving God. I mean, I don't even have words to explain it. I just wanted to get up here and say, thank you, Jesus. I want to get up here and just worship him because he is so good. And that's just my testimony. We serve a good God. If you don't know him, try him for yourself. He is a good, good God. And I'm just so thankful for him being in my life. And on those who know word of prayer, continue to pray for me that I'm what God wants me to be. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Lord. Give it on to God. I want to thank God for being here. I want to thank God for being such a good God. You know, there's a song that we sing that says, Anybody ask you what's the matter with me, just tell them I'm saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled, fire baptized. I've got Jesus on my side and I'm running for my life. I just thank God for being so real. I thank God that he looked beyond my faults and he saw my needs. I thank God that he's so real. I thank God that he's everything in my life today. I can say God is the love of my life. He's never, ever failed me. I thank God for being in the land of the living. You know, I have 13 brothers and sisters and five died. And God kept me for such a time as this. I say, God, what am I that thou art mindful of me? I just thank God for putting me in this great ministry for this time. I thank God for the church that we're in, that we never close, that we have the faith to believe that God is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. I to pray my mind and strength in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Oh, yes, the, the joy of the Lord is my strength. So um, I'm grateful today for the opportunity to stand, be standing here uh, and give God some praise, some glory. Uh, you know, it's, it's a joy unspeakable and full of glory that I try to uh, exemplify with words. How, how can I tell you how great God has been to me? It's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, I'm standing here by the grace of God and... You know, the joy of the Lord is like fire inside of me. It's, it's fire. And when you understand that we're not here saying, oh, God is good. No, God is great yes, and is. greatly to be praised. And we're here to magnify the Lord, of, uh, magnify the name of Jesus. We're here to glorify him every day. Yes. He woke me up this morning. It started me on my way. And then I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. You know, you guys understand the privilege and the honor just to be called a son of God? Just to come here? Do you understand that you didn't come here by yourself? But God, the goodness of God, led you in this place that you might come here and repent, that you might come here to be transformed by the power of God. When you sit here and you see us, you know, this is 
the joy of the Lord. This is the power of God. This is the magnificence of the glory of God every day. And I thank God for being here. I thank God for just having the privilege to just say something about Jesus. To think about Jesus. To live a life that reflects Jesus. Just, you know, it's an opportunity. You don't understand the privilege to just be here and want and pursue a life uh, be, uh, before Jesus. Like, okay, I want to be like him. And then we get instructed, we get corrected, and then, but most importantly, we receive the word of God that is able to save our souls. It's, it's, it's just great. We serve a great God. We say God is good all the time, but God is great all the time. And he's greatly to be praised. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We thank God for that testimony. And I know sometimes what happens after testimony service, you go home in your car and you say, oh, gee, I forgot to put my name in to testify. But we all got a space right now to testify. When we sing the song, so when I ask you, did anybody love my Jesus? That's your chance to testify, to let somebody next to you know that my God has been good to me all week. Because as he said, the joy of the Lord is your strength. And looking back on you, we, we needed strength to make it through this week. Did we need strength? Come on, church. We're here to serve God this afternoon. The presence of the Lord is here. He is in this place. Anything that you need, Jesus is on the main line right now. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all.
recite a song that maybe you might want to sing. I, you, you can sit down if you want to. Uh, I feel good. Wait a minute, that's momentarily. You may be seated. I feel good, good, good. Why do you feel good? No, 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 no more singing. That's no. <laughs> I'm not singing. I won't have any voice. I won't. Now, now if you want to take the song over, you can, but I'm not going to take it over. Sit down. I'm gonna sing it. Here we are. Uh, today is April the fourth, um, according. I forget the Gregorian Julian calendar. It's the fourth with the Jewish calendar. I think it's still in March, if I'm correct. So we have these dates. Uh, uh, Sister Holmes, show me some dates that are similar to this. Now, most of us, we call today, uh, resur the new thing is called Resurrect Resurrection Sunday. means the day that Jesus rose. Uh, when I was popular, it was called Easter. Then uh, uh, there's another name for it. There's three names. Easter. New thing is Resurrection Sunday and the Passover. So you got everything confused. So uh, uh, just familiarize, so let's go back the next 10 years. Uh, uh, let, let's go back to, to April 4th. Uh, and that's, that's what you call Easter. Then the 24th was Easter. Then the 8th was Easter. Then March 31st was Easter. And then both worlds celebrated the 20th. And then it jumped to the 15th, to the March, the 24th, April the 26th. And then uh, particularly three, uh, 218, it was April Fool's Day. And uh, 19 was April 21st, and uh, 2020 was uh, the 12th. And next year, uh, if we're alive, it's gonna be 17th. Now something's wrong with that. He was not raised a resurrection Sunday Easter on all those different days. Now, we were born a birth on a particular day. Uh, and it's fixed, it's definite. You and I were born such and such a date. But when it comes to the Savior being resurrected, it's all over the board. Who determines that, the church? All those, listen to me, crazy dates. So mistakenly, people think that this is the day of resurrection or the Easter or the Passover it has nothing to do with it. Now I'm just going by 
We're not even in the scriptures. We're going by the calendar that says something's wrong. Back in the 60s, most of you weren't, probably weren't even born. A lot of you weren't born. There was a movement. Uh, they called it the Children of God. There was a hippie movement, psychedelic movement. Uh, they used such groups as the temptation to popularize it called psychedelic something, shack, I, I can't remember. And they used a group that I never heard. I was in the service at that time when I came back from overseas to Los Angeles. It was a group called Fifth Dimension, Fifth Dimension. I didn't know what that was. I'm, I'm just coming from overseas, from Japan, Philippines, etc. And we get here back into Long Beach, which is close to Los Angeles. We hear, I hear a song. I don't know what it was, the fifth, I don't even know what it was. But when I saw the way they were dressed, now I'm, going, I'm, I'm a traditionalist. Uh, when I say a traditionalist, I'm talking about a sinner. I'm one of them regular sinners. And I saw the fifth dimension dress. I said, something's wrong with that. Now I'm talking to myself quite naturally. Then out in California, had someone real popular that they had popularized called Jimi Hendrix. And I thought, I thought that was strange. Uh, you know, coming from Philadelphia, that was strange. And they had Sly and the Family Stones. I don't know if they were even popular on the West East Coast, but the West Coast, I said, these some, this, not, not, listen, I'm not saved, not in the church. I said, there are a lot of strange things going on. I said, how are they popularizing the music? I don't even know what the Fifth Dimension was saying, but I later found out that it's a cult. It's, then some strange things start happening. The culture was changing. There was one man that was behind the scenes that most of you never heard of. His name was Joseph Fletcher. He died in 1991. He popularized a premise or a foundation for the 60s. In fact, one of the biggest events in the world in the 60s was down here in uh, outside of Kingston. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What did they call it? Woodstock. I didn't know that was all for hippies. That was for crazy people. And so um, Fletcher popularized something that I didn't understand when I first, in the 60s, I didn't get saved until 70, 71. Uh, it was called situation ethics. How many of you remember that phrase? That's what they use. Situation ethics. It meant uh, there were no absolute. There were no absolutes, uh, do's and don'ts. It was dependent on, oh, there you go. Situation ethics was the most famously championed by, championed by Joseph Fletcher. He believed that we should follow the rules until we need to break them for reason of love. <laughs> so look, say follow the rules, but, but if love is involved, you do how you feel. It is based on agape, love, uh, Christian unconditional love, and listen, this is distorted, uh, and says that we should always do the most loving thing in any situation. Well, wait a minute, what's loving? Euthanasia, abortion, not, this is him, cloning, infantile, I think that's what you pronounce it, infantile, it means you, you can kill, as long as they're one year old, you can kill your baby or something like that. And there was something else, cloning, cloning, uh, like the Germans tried to do, uh, make a duplicate of me. Uh, he believed in all that. He was an Episcopal priest. He later on became an atheist. Watch those Episcopalians, but not all of them like that. And uh, he popularized that, and that was what all of our laws are based on today is situation ethics. Uh, uh, th there's a moral reason. Uh, let's kill uh, this baby. If the mother chooses to kill the baby, it had to be for uh, some uh, ethical reasons instead of unethical. Say, so there's a reason why a mother kills a baby. Uh, she's sick. Uh, she don't. She, it's, she's strange. She's depressed. And so that was what we would call situation ethics. It, it says. Oh, there you go. Uh, now, this is everything he goes for. Abortion, infantile, euthanasia, eugenics, and cloning. 
ordained as an Episcopal priest and later identified himself that he don't even believe in God. And yet his influence is in every fabric of life. It's about emotions. You know what today is about? Emotions. I thought today, now, now I can extract anything, you two can extract anything out of your past that you want to. So uh, I'm getting dressed and I saw Uncle Bebop. I'm not gonna tell you about Uncle Bebop. Uh, and, and, and I lived, this was in the 50s, the late 50s, we were borderline. I, I was trying to remember when I say borderline, the neighborhood was in transition. Uh, the whites were moving out and the, and the blacks were moving in and I thought about the families that were left there. I could see them now in my mind. And I remember what Easter was. Easter, uh, most of them were Italians that were still on the block. They would have these decorative bottles of whiskey. I, I think it had, it wasn't wine because on Easter when our folks would have a festival, they would have a wine bottle and it'd be in your hand. But they did it very decorative. And as a little kid, I used to watch that and wonder how expensive that was that they would come over that particular day on Easter after what they call the church that was down the street, St. Joseph, it was Easter morning Sunday or something like that. And, and everybody was in a festive mood. They were in a festive mood. And what I couldn't understand, what hurt me tremendously is, is that uh, when I was about 12 years old, my mother no longer bought me an Easter suit. Now, it's not in the scripture, but every Easter, uh, you were expected to get a suit, new clothing, new shirt, new tie. I can see my little hat that I had. We call it the church hat. And what you wore Sunday morning when you went to junior high school, you would wear your Easter outfit the first day. So I was traumatized. I had been used to getting an Easter suit, Easter hat, Easter shoes. Everything was brand new, new socks. Uh, yeah, even, not even the underwear, but everything was new. And so uh, one particular time I knew it was getting late. We used to go down on a place called South Street, and they had all these Jewish stores down there. And usually my mother would wait until Saturday to take me to get a suit, get outfitted, take a couple hours to fix it, come back and pick it up. So I went to my mama. I said, Mom, uh, it, it, it's getting late, and you haven't bought me a suit. Now I'm thinking, I'm not thinking about church. I'm thinking about Monday morning, I have to go to school, and all them kids are going to have their Easter outfits on. Barrett Junior High School, 16th and Warden Street, I can remember just like that. I was traumatized. So it's getting late, it's getting dark. She said, oh, I can't tell you what she said. Uh, but you know how mom must talk back then in there. She, she called me, a, one of the things she called me a fool, she said, uh, so you're too old for that. I said, too old for what? I'm thinking about Monday morning. I've got to go to school and everybody gonna be showing off their rags. We used to call them glad rags. And um, she said, no, no more East Hill boys. So you go get a job. Now, uh, that hurt me because I was 12, 13. I'm, I'm not used to not having something. For, in, in fact, I wasn't even gonna go to church because I didn't have any Easter outfit. And I, I sort of threatened mom a little bit. I said something like, well, I'm not going to go to church. She said, I don't care if you don't go to church. And all the other stuff she said. So, but she made me go just the same. So what happened, I was traumatized. I was hurt. I wasn't prepared for that. She didn't deal with me delicately. Uh, so my, my emotions was wrapped up in Easter. Didn't have birthday parties, didn't have birthday celebration, didn't have any of that. So at least let me have a little something for Easter. She killed that, she squashed that. And so from that time, I never forgot it, even when I could see myself over coming out of Subic Bay in the Philippines, and it's a, 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 it's a holiday. And my mind is going all the way back here, I'm in the service, I'm 18 now. Uh, going all back to the time when I was traumatized when I was 12 years old. Anybody ever been traumatized? Uh, but I carry the hurt, but it's buried. Let's do what I'm saying. I carry the hurt, the disappointment, but I choose to keep it buried. So I didn't blame my mama for anything. Uh, 
she, she was just tough. She, she was, that was real life. And so occasionally I could remember the Easter dinners we would have. Ah, oh, we'd have Easter dinner. It would be a special occasion. We would invite somebody over. Those were special times. A lot of emotions tied up in that. My wife has yet to cook me Easter dinner. Well, you know, but we just let it go. We, as I say, we let it slide. So Easter was extremely important to me. Uh, I, I, I was wrapped up in it emotionally. So when I think about Easter, uh, I think about childhood. Now, you know, the psychologists, if they want to find out what you, what's wrong with you, they take you back to the time of prenatal birth, trying to find out what's wrong with us. The problem is we, we, we refuse to adapt. So today is, I want to get me a brand new suit and get me a brand new shirt uh, and this and so forth. To symbolize what? To symbolize what? Uh, I, I'm not going to call the nationality, but they say this is the time that they get richer to exploit. We are being, oh, Easter flower. What is the Easter flower? Oh, I can remember well at the church, uh, Mount Sinai Baptist Church, we were having an uh, Easter egg hunt, hunt downstairs in the church, an Easter egg hunt. What in the world does an egg have to do with Easter? And then uh, uh, late on, on, on Saturday, my father would go get, they were selling them real cheap at the drugstore, not the pharmacies, at the drugstore. They call them Easter basket. Oh boy, I want an Easter basket. You have, you have these little fluffy chickens in it, uh, pink and yellow. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Little, little marshmallows, marshmallow chickens, and uh, and then you have chocolate rabbits, uh, and then you have some fake eggs, and you have some boiled eggs. Uh, uh, listen, you got an Easter basket. <laughs> listen, you're almost in heaven. But it was all about spending money. Oh, uh, there it goes. Oh, I never had nothing like that. <laughs> I had three or four items in there. <laughs> no, 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 but see, this, you don't see the full, but you, you got to have pretty paper. Anybody remember the pretty paper? <laughs> well, that was all emotions. It had nothing to do with me loving God, knowing God, acknowledging God. It, it was about a self-fulfillment. Uh, uh, it was about a tradition. So here we are today, we've got to ask ourselves, what does today really mean to us? Because once we get the Easter clothes, what do we do with them? Throw them aside. I'm going to ask you uh, to, uh, to consider the, the stage or the phase that we're living in, and much of it is based on situation ethics, how we feel. Subjectivity, when we talk about subjectivity, subject me, how I feel. I've seen many people cry and become despondent and psych psychologically disoriented because Easter wasn't what it used to be. Nothing is like it used to be. Listen, devastating for Christmas? When my mama told me I wasn't gonna get a train stack for Christmas, Listen, I, I, one particular time I wanted Gene, uh, most of you know who I'm talking about now, Gene Archery. He had a, uh, anybody know about that cowboy, Gene Archery? Just, I, I wanted a gun set like his. I wanted one like the Long Ranger. Uh, I, wanted, I didn't want Billy the Kid. And I come for, we had a little Christmas tree in the corner, 1501 Point Breeze Avenue. I can see it in the corner in the living room. And so I'm in the bed, so I get out of the bed, run, run in the morning. I'm up about 7 o'clock, can't sleep. Can't. Yeah, there goes Gene Archer. Uh, I couldn't buy the hat. The hat was too expensive, but they made plastic guns. At least it was a cap gun, a cap gun. Anybody know what a cap gun is? <laughs> so what happened was, uh, I'm hurt now. No, no, I'm excited, emotionally excited, because all the surprises were going to be there. And I went in the living room. Everybody was asleep, the Christmas lights were still on the tree, the angel hair, the stencil. Listen, I, I see the star at the top of it, and then I look on the bottom, I didn't see anything. <laughs> now wait a minute, I'm a kid. Now wait a minute, this hurts. <laughs> I didn't laugh, but I saw nothing. So um, 
I'm ready to commit suicide. Uh, and, and, and so I'm, I'm looking d despondent and I said, figure, I said, mom and dad must have a head in their bedroom. So I said, maybe I should go in their bedroom, knock on the door, go in the bedroom, ask them where the toy is at. So I was too scared to do that. So I went and got back in bed, couldn't sleep. I wanted my mom and dad to get up and tickle my mom. Give me an explanation, where are my toys? I get, in fact, I gave her a list. I figured since I gave her a list that she would at least be obligated. I didn't want a lot of things. And so when she got up, I said, Mama, Mama, I'm about halfway crying. <laughs> I said, where my, where my things at? She said, what things, fool? <laughs> That's the first word she used, but we won't go any more. I said, I, I, I wanted, I don't remember, I wanted this, that, and so forth. Then she said, you're too old for that. I'm still feeling like a kid, and she's telling me I'm too old for that. So am I going to argue with my, so emotions was wrapped up in that. So emotions all through life, up and down, up and down. But I made a choice not to let me, let it affect me the rest of my life. Some of us are still traumatized by things that happened 200 years ago. Traumatized making ourselves miserable by reliving what has already happened. Today should be as special as any other day. Because we serve the Lord, we reverence and under honor him every day. In fact, show me the two days uh, where alcohol purchases skyrockets. Now anytime the world decides they're going to commemorate something special as an Easter or a Christmas or a Passover, or something's wrong. They're going to celebrate Jesus with us? Uh-uh. Something's wrong with that picture. Scripture says, whosoever will be a friend of the world's enemy of God. So we ask the question, where does this lead to and what is the pre premise of this? It's about deception. You see, you, you see, New Year's Eve, 159% more. Christmas Eve, behind, now this is alcohol purchases. There's another one that talked about Easter, the purchases. Easter might be number three or four. The people just get filthy drunk and that honors God. I can see right now, 1501 Point Breeze across the street, we didn't call them liquor stores, they were called state stores. Now, I couldn't, now when I was in, I couldn't, I, 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 I didn't call it state store, I called it, uh, not state store, I called it steak store. Like a steak you eat. So I'm watching, it closes about 9, 30, 10 o'clock, the liquor store, it was controlled by the government, only the state sold it, and them folks, Lines outside the day before, the night before Easter, just buying liquor. Uh, liquor and wine. You couldn't buy it from a grocery store or market. You, you had to get it from the state store. And I can remember very vividly in my mind, wondering what they're doing. I, I can see Podgy, one of the old man coming out. Podgy didn't have any money, and he wanted the man to give up his old cheap wine. And man wasn't doing, he beating up the man over wine. So those are the impressions that I have uh, about Easter. No one taught me. Wait a minute, we used to have something called Palm Sunday. I just remember that. How many remember Palm Sunday? It, it was popularized. And uh, they would sell some things they would make, some trinkets or something that you would, you would buy. Mom would say, get this. So now we're to a point is that we got to make some, something relevant of today. It just can't be based on, now everybody know what Easter means. I'm not fighting against Easter. Easter means Ishtar. Ishtar is a replica of the Babylonian God. And one replica is in New York Harbor. They call it, and see they rename it. See if the devil's red, it's different if, 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 you, if, if you color him pink or if you color the devil green, it's no longer 
uh, uh, significant, we think. But the devil's the devil. It doesn't matter what color you color him. Well, Ishtar, see, Easter was originally the celebration of Ishtar, which in English means English. Listen, I haven't gotten to the scripture yet. This, this is just historical facts. It means, Ishtar means Easter. Now, why does God want us commemorating a day that is dedicated to uh, fertility? That's what the rabbit is all about, fertility, having babies and bunnies and so forth. And so this goddess, uh, uh, Libertist, the French call it Libertist, that donated to us New York Harbor, the Statue of Liberty, it's made after Ishtar. Now, the question is, we must put some significance on the day, and the most significant thing that we put on the day is that we're saved. Every day is special. How many of you know that? that you're in the land of the living. That's special. I've got to give you a little bit of origins now. 12th chapter of Acts. So now we're hung up emotionally. Oh, my, uh, my daughter didn't come, and my, my son, and I see my mother, and I see my father and my grand. Yes, that's a reality. Uh, I, I was 17. I, I can see myself crying at the end. I didn't want my father and my father see me crying, take me to the Philadelphia International Airport on my way to... Uh, Someplace in Chicago, I can't even think of it. Camp, not Camp Barry. Someplace on the way to Chicago. I'm seven, 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 seventeen and a half, I should say. Great Lakes. I was on my way to Great Lakes, Illinois, outside of Chicago, and only one saw me off: my mother, my father, and made my sister go. <laughs> Going to the airport. First I ever been to an airport, other than sit outside the gate and watch the planes fly. That was a big treat. Do you know on Sundays, if the family was going to do something, where the planes would take off, there was a big gate there. Cars would line up, and you have ice cream. And it was a thrill to see them planes go over top of our head. That was, that was close as I've been to the airport. Now I'm 17. I'm in the airport. Oh, immediately I felt the emotion. Mama, daddy, and maybe sister. Uh, I'm getting on the airplane. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm so scared. I'm so nervous. I didn't know what, I didn't know how to read the ticket. I was too scared. I was too nervous. And so finally I'm on the airport I'm by the window and I'm looking around and I felt empty and lost and isolated and all by myself at 17 years old. Going to a place I'd never been before. And I knew I'd be there for almost four years. And I can remember the emotion right now. My father... He, I, my father was born, uh, I'm saying this, he was born without tear ducts. He cried over nothing. I only know that my father knew how to cry. He couldn't even cry crocodile te tears. So he was just stern looking. And my mama got a little white handkerchief, hidden it a little bit. I think she kissed me. That's the only thing I got. Nobody hugged me, kissed me. All right, now, son, we, we're going to wish you the best. And we pray. I didn't do that stuff. Well, I don't think about it. A uh, 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 main, they call me main. Well, main, uh, we're going to be praying for you. You're going to say, I didn't say that. That's television stuff. So and I still feel the emotions now. And, and they, could, they, they could literally take over me if I let them. Because all I have to do is just keep thinking and keep thinking and keep pressing the issue and remember this and recalling all the pain and recycling it again, all, not reality, but all up in my mind. So this day brought great promise for many of you. you know, I'm gonna see Aunt Betsy, and I'm gonna see Aunt this one. Now. Now you're gonna see him all right. It's not that significant. It's a day that we dedicate individually or church-wise we dedicate it to God. Yes, now, 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 if you want a lot of hurt and emotions, help yourself. Just start thinking. Go back to the time you were a child, five years old, six years old, seven years old, and eight years old, and nine years old. Go back if you choose to do that. 
but don't spiritualize it. And that's the problem with the church today. We have spiritualized it. Let's look at the 12th chapter of Acts. I hope somebody's with me. I told you you better sing the song while you can. I feel good, good, good. <laughs> I'm going to try to get you back there on track about feeling good. But we're talking about reality. Uh, now, I was, I was listening to the story about um, four men. Tinsdale, how many of you heard of Tinsdale? Anybody heard of Tinsdale? Back in the 16th century. Uh, he, he, he was a scholar. He was determined to translate uh, the Bible into English. And it was forbidden by the Catholic Church to have the Bible in anything other than Latin. It was uh, forbidden. Uh, but he dedicated himself, and four of his, five of his helpers uh, were martyred. Four men and a woman, uh, they read what he had translated the Greek into English, what they call Saxton, uh, and uh, they were condemned for all five of them for teaching their children the Lord's Prayer. For teaching their children the Lord's Prayer. Uh, they were burnt at the stake Thousands watch uh, because they were disobeying the Catholic Church. And uh, the logs were around them. One of them, uh, no, that was Tinsdale. The flames were so intense that the fire was shooting out, they said, out of the tips of his finger as it burned. But they, uh, Tins, now I'm going to Tinsdale. They, they didn't just want him to burn. Uh, they they took, took a branch and, and hollowed it through, put a hole through, and put a piece of metal in the branch. It was flexible, and they tied it around. His hands were already tied, but they, they wanted him what they called double suffer. So they put it around his neck so that when the wood would burn, it would be heating up the wire that's inside of the wood because they wanted the pain to be excruciating as it possibly can because he had influenced Christians to teach the Lord's Prayer. That's what they died for, teaching the Lord's Prayer. Children died as a result of their parents' conviction. Now, 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 now we go through some things. We hurt. But most of our hurt is, listen to me, emotionally. We ask ourselves, where does that come from? How we process information. Said if you don't like the way you feel, change the way you think. As a man, scripture, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. So what you and I think is potentially catastrophic if it's sub subjectivity where I'm only referencing myself and how I feel it could be the worst thing in the world but if I reference others somebody somewhere is going through something much 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 worse I remember uh, Little Barbara, I can call her name. Uh, she came over here. How old was she? How old was she? Five years old from West Africa. Didn't see her parents, her mother, till she was in her 20s. Couldn't go back to there. Four, five years old, separated. But she's not, there's, there, there are millions of stories like that. Uh, kids that, about, that the communists kidnapped, confiscated, taking them, uh, kids that are abducted, ex uh, abducted, etc. Someone somewhere is much worse off. We should be thankful to God that what you and I are going through is not any, any worse. Uh, I remember when my mother died I think she was in her 50s. 
And uh, I, I, I just believe as I prayed for that, that she was going to recover. I know I wasn't sure it was going to recover. I just wanted the Lord to be merciful. And as I told you, that little machine, tick, 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 whatever that little machine was at St. Mary's Hospital, uh, I kept saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. She's dying. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I have an expectation my prayer that God can still perform a miracle. I kept saying, thank you, Jesus. And then it said, tick, tick, tick. First thing I did was remember Job. The Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The scripture says in all this, Job said not, not charge God foolishly. Now, wait a minute, Job. What were you going through? Ten. Ten of his children died crushed at the same time. They were crushed at the same time. Now, there's got to be some emotional attachment there. Ten funerals at one time. The Lord giveth, he concluded, the Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. First century church here. Sometime around A.D. 50, I would think. Chapter 12, verse 1. Now about this time, King Herod, the king, stretched forth his hands to torture vex certain of the church. He was selected. Now you must remember the, the devil has gotten permission from God to try to test us. Put our faith on fire. He said, but selective ones that no doubt he wanted to make an example of them. And he killed, God let him kill James, the brother of John, with the sword. God let it happen. Now James always knew, believers always knew that there was the threat of a price that they had to pay for their commitment. The problem today, we seem to be alienated from that. There's a price that we have to pay for our commitment. It's costly. Not monetarily, but emotionally, it's costly. And because he saw it please the opposition, the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Say, then were the days of unleavened bread said this seven day feast that they had. He said, now it, this was the time that's most important. But there was something that was special to the, to the heathen and to those that didn't know God or accept God. Stay with me if you please. And when he had apprehended him, he asked Peter, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. He wants to commemorate his holiday, Easter. But say, these were the times of unleavened bread and Easter happened to fall on that time, period of unleavened bread for seven days. And that's it. And, and then from there, we have to go to the Britannica Encyclopedia, uh, Britannica Encyclopedia of the Collins Encyclopedia of World History Books and find, well, what do you mean, Easter? It was Constantine, Roman Emperor, I think it was third, fourth century, third or fourth century Constantine, where he's trying to uh, establish the Roman Empire and he needed the Catholic influence and the Pope. And uh, Easter, was falling, this is Easter, was falling on a, uh, a, I think it was a Wednesday. And so he changed and said, we got to do something with the equinox and do something with uh, the new moon to keep this thing on, on a Sunday. And say, uh, we want to keep it sacred. Uh, we want to keep it a particular thing. But it can only occur 
after the new moon. That is, when you have a little crescent, then you have the new moon, and that varies, and that's why these dates up here keeps varying because it's predicated on the new moon. Hold that, if you please, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians. Now, it has nothing to do with the Savior being raised from the dead, the resurrection. It has to do with an established holiday that has been adopted. At one time, they used to call it a holy day. Now it's a holiday. That's all we've got is holidays. Yesterday, how many of you know Friday was a holiday? It was called... No, no, I'm not even talking about Good Friday. No, Thursday. Maybe it was Thursday, not Good Friday. Thursday was walk to work holiday. Walk to work. Wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, there's a grandparents holiday, a grandmother and a grandfather. There's a Mother's Day and a Father's Day, and there's a Godparents' Day. Uh, I'm trying to think of these. Uh, there's a Teacher's Holiday. Uh, everybody got a holiday. You can be crazy and have a holiday. Uh, 2.16, now Paul was talking, let no man therefore judge you in what you eat. You can eat or you don't eat. Big deal. I got a call the other day that someone wanted to dispute about what was clean and unclean. It was about the goat and the sheep. And I told the individual, I said, don't waste your time with that. I said, let them eat what they want to eat. I said, eat what you want to eat. Paul says, don't let anyone judge you in meat or in drink. Now, it's not talking about alcohol or beverages. Or in respect for a holiday. Say that you got to honor a holy day. Say, say look, look, look. Say, say, don't worry about that. Or the new moon. Say, wait a minute. This thing, new moon, moon has gone been for centuries. Say, say, don't get caught up in that new moon stuff. Say, or the Sabbath. Oh, the Sabbath is Saturday. The Sabbath is Sunday. Well, I agree. I love my brother and sisters that believe that the Sabbath, that they should worship on, on, on Saturday. All right. Don't condemn me. Because Jesus did not rise on the Sabbath. He, raised on, he rose on the first day of the week. And what's the first day of the week? Better not call it like that. Better call it day one. <laughs> That's all the Catholic churches instituted that. That's why we worship all the churches worship on Sunday. It has nothing to do with the Catholic church. I, I can't say it doesn't have anything to do with it. They popularize it. But Jesus didn't, didn't, didn't raise from the dead on the Sabbath. Three days and three nights, he said he would be in the heart of the earth. So if he died on a Wednesday, and, and so, let, well, yeah, was it Wednesday? Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. One day would be Wednesday to Thursday, okay? Then Thursday, Friday would be two days, and Friday, Saturday would be three days. He said, three days is going to be in the heart of the earth. And he rose the first day of the week which happens to be a name after the sun god, Sunday. So he said, now look, Paul said, don't get hung up in all that. He, 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 he said, don't get tied down with that. What is most importantly is uh, consistency. I don't love the Lord any more today than any other day. I, I, I don't think uh, honoring him today is more important than any other day. Every day ought to be the same. Go back with me to Acts chapter 12. Now, let me tell you why I'm giving you this. We've got to wake up. The, the world, the ch particularly the church, have to wake up. Deception is everywhere. All was intended for us to miss the mark. And what is the mark? Heaven. Paul even talks about, not Paul, the writer to the Hebrews talks about entanglements. Say, so don't get so locked up in things. Uh, and particularly, we have to talk about emotions. That's everything. Situation ethics. We, we just live by emotion. You hurt me. You said this. I thought you said this. Why did you, what, wait a minute. Why did you say it? 
well, well, I want you to forgive me. No, but I need to know why you said it. No, no, wait a minute. If I'm asking you to forgive me, what difference does it make why I said that? Just forgive me. They asked the question, how often should I forgive my brethren? Said Peter said, Lord, how often should I forgive? Peter said, seven times? Remember, seven times, Peter's counting now. Wait a minute, one, two, three, four, five. That's it, no more forgiveness. But the Lord stunned him. He said, no, Peter, seven times 70. Wait a minute, that's 490 times you have to forgive. Wait a minute. Let's, let's try to do it. All right. He did it, she did it. They ask you to forgive them. Bang. So you don't even have a one. You have canceled out the one. How have you canceled out the one? Because you forgave them. You never get off a of one. Because every time they come and ask for forgiveness, you're obligated to forgive. So one, that's it. Can't come back to one, one. No, no, you're not going to enumerate. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. No, no, you've done it too many times. The Lord says, as often as they ask. So you got to forgive. Now that's the real love. Uh, Joseph Fletcher predicated situation or situation ethics on love, agape love. He's distorting the scriptures. Verse 4 again. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quadrants of soldiers to keep him intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was separated from the brethren, unexpectedly was kept in prison. Always remember when it's adversity, I don't care what you or I are going through, but the but. You're dying, but isolated, but you've got to keep that but factor involved. Say, here are the circumstances, here are the situation, but look what he said. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but get a district attorney, get an attorney, get the district attorney. Prayer was made without giving up. Now, wait a minute. What's the answer? What's the solution? Prayer was made without giving up. Prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him. Now, wait a minute. How are you going to get out of this? He's already killed James. And we know that his, that was a crowd pleaser. Now he's going to kill Peter. He's incarcerated, four quadrant of soldiers. So what, what do we do conventionally? Uh, can, can we get him an attorney? Uh, can we get him a public defender? Say, do, do we break in prison? No. The butt factor. You're frustrated discouraged and wondering when will prayer be answered as though we can put some demands on God but that's how we think we should never give up on prayer God has never let any of us down whatever you think your circumstances are saying to you what you have surmised what you have thought about the worst possible scenario, and everything looks bleak. That's no indication for you to get rid of the butt factor. For we know that all things work together for good. Doesn't matter how dismal, how bleak it looks, we know the outcome. And the devil will change our circumstances to make us give up hope. Uh, when Peter and the disciples saw Jesus walking on the water, they were on the boat because they were in trouble. It was a life-threatening situation. 
And uh, they were fearful. They thought it was a demon. They thought it was a spirit. Never seen no man walk on water. And so Jesus said, be of good cheer as I. Peter's faith responded, said, Lord, if it is you or be you, bid me to come unto you. Say, let me walk on the water to you. Lord said, come. Peter climbs out of the boat. First of all, you got to have some courage. The boat was a lifeboat that was safety. He's walking on the waters. His eyes are fixated. And here comes the problem. His eyes are fixated. fixated. That, that is the focal point. Jesus. Jesus. But here comes the devil. Turbulent water, he's walking on it. The devil decided to make it worse. The scripture says the water became boisterous. And when Peter saw, he turned. He turned his head. And the devil's constantly trying to get us to turn, to turn our heads. Scripture says, looking unto Jesus, the what? The author and the finisher of what? So what you and I need now is a faith injection. Lord, inject me with some faith. For this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our what? When he turned his head, the scripture says he began to sink. But he had the presence of mind, even in a more life-threatening situation. I don't care what you're going through. He said, Lord, save me. That is, God can help anyone if you ask him or let him. But the Lord wants us to ask. Ask the Savior to help you. The Lord said, ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. So the devil made things worse. We immediately, conventionally think about when things getting worse. Here's, this is it. This is doom. Uh-uh, not with God. That's why the scripture says, the just shall live. We, we walk by faith. Now, any of us can conjure up in our minds, this is going to happen and that can happen. If we just look at our circumstances, look at the situation, and, and it seems like things are unmanageable. I, how am I going to pay this? Well, well, you know, money. The devil tear us up about money now. Never have enough money, particularly in a crisis, it tears up. Never, 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 never. But money's never an issue with God. Uh, God isn't bankrupt. Uh, God doesn't need a whole lot. All God needs is a little bit. And when we look through the scriptures, it seems like most of the miracles come when there's a little bit. Uh, He's not asking for you and I to have everything. If we were all right without him, we don't need him. But he thrives on fulfilling, rescuing, and delivering those that have needs. Uh, scripture says your heavenly father knoweth that you have. Does anybody have a need? Uh, and, and, and he did not what you call modify, say, well, it has to be critical, it has to be severe. He just said, need. Well, wait a minute, let's get on these emotions. Wait a minute, you don't know how I feel. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know how I'm tormenting in my mind. Uh, you, you, you don't know everything I have to deal with. I don't have to know, no one else has to know, but God knows. And one thing that we understand about God is that he will not allow us to be tested, tempted above that which you're able, but will with the problem, whatever the problem is, make a way to escape that you might be able to what? Might be able to bear. So we don't find any fault in the Lord. His process, prayer always works. When it seemed like, as they say in the world, that Peter's fate was it, he was going to die the next day, prayer was made 
without ceasing. So songs that you pray on, I'll pray on some sweet day after a while. Praying time will all be over. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians 4. We, I think we're going to end that there. I, if I can get you to visualize this and keep this verse in um, 5, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5. What are you going through? Uh, I know the song, I think it was the Caravans and Albertina Walker made. God specializes in things that are what? We've all heard the lyrics. He specializes in things that are impossible. Chapter 5 and verse 1. Now look what Paul says. For it is definite, it is an absolute, it's not about situation ethics whatsoever. For we know. Paul says, I'm persuaded that nothing shall be able to separate. Say, say we know. Not guessing or thinking or wondering. We know. It's absolutely we know. Well, what is it that we know? For we know that if while we're here on the land of the dying, our earthly house, um, the tabernacle is where God dwells in our house, were dissolved, disintegrate, die. We have a building of God and house not made with hands eternal in heaven. So devil, if you cause me to leave this house, God already has prepared another house. He, uh, and, and, and in other words, the Lord, Paul is reiterating what Jesus said. Fear not them which kill the body, but rather fear him that can destroy both body and soul in hell. He said, now look, I'm going around with this mentality, with this mindset, every trial, every test I go through, I'm not going to allow myself to be threatened, for we know that his earthly house of this tabernacle be dissolved. So everywhere I'm going, I got that mindset. Doesn't matter how closely death stares one in the face. My mindset is, I know the outcome. Listen, uh, Paul says, and, and this is an example for all of us. Say, whatever you do, he said, Timothy, fight the good fight. Say, put up some effort. Scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Don't allow yourself from this point to be dragged down emotionally over something that you cannot change. What has happened... It's happened. Can't go back into the time tunnel. It's, it's over. That, that's reality. Now you can make yourself psychotic. You can make yourself emotionally disturbed. You can make yourself depressed. Just put your mind down in the valley of despair. Woe is me. Look what I am going through. Nobody knows what it feels like. If they did know what it feels like, it wouldn't help you any. But God knows. Today we want to rededicate and refocus. This, is a, this should catapult me to want to honor God more every day. Say, if I've been tricked to believe that I've been worshiping him and honoring him, I haven't been. Say, i got to make this up. Say, how do we make it up? Live every day, if it was possible, as though it was our last day. This earthly house. And I go around thinking. I try to make it a habit to think about heaven. You know, is that a good thing to think about? Now, it's so easy to allow ourselves to be indulged in misery. Repetition deepens impression, means if you think about it, think about it. Fourth chapter of Philippians, if you think about it. Repetition deepens impressions. If you think about it, what are you and I going to think about? 
verse 8, 4, 8. Finally, brethren, what are we going to think about? Well, you, you know, so-and-so's incarcerated and so on in the hospital, so, so what are you going to do? What are your thoughts going to do? Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise. What does it say? If you think about miserable things, you're going to feel miserable. Verse number seven. And the peace, tranquility, soundness, and the peace of God, which passeth, you won't understand it, but just do it. Passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Say, I, I can't keep it. Say, but well, at least I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Say, I got to think about some good things. If, I, 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 if I'm sick, I couldn't be worse. If I'm broke, uh, I could be worse. If I'm lonely, it could be suicidal. Say there are a whole lot of things that can be worse. I can't think about those things. And uh, so and so might die. Your thinking isn't going to change anything. Every one of us must get to heaven for our. When I think, what, what, what was that? What? You know my soul cries, hallelujah, I thank God. Now when I what? Come on. You know my soul. Oh, I thank God. I thank God. I thank God.
I do what? Of the goodness of Jesus. And all that is done for me, you're, listen, you are still here. In spite of everything, you're still here. Just a little bit of it. I'm so glad Jesus lived in me. Whoa. I'm so glad. Come on, brothers. Jesus lived in me. Well, I'm, I'm so glad. Ladies, sing your part.
Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus
Just a little bit. It's a prayer.
of the Lord in the magnificent name of Jesus Christ. Your word tells us that we can come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Right now, someone's time of need is a time of desperation. Now, we believe your word. Your word says the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. Lord, we're reaching out to you. Our faith looks up unto thee. We need a miracle. We're asking, Lord God, that you strengthen by faith in the inner man. But most importantly, Lord, keep us as the apple of thy. Thank you that we're still in the land of the living. Lord, and we believe and trust that one day we will be a better version of ourselves. We're praying, Lord, make us to be what we ought to be. Send help from the sanctuary. You know the struggles and the difficulties that everyone is having. Bind the adversary and the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you said if we resist the devil, he will flee from us. Don't let us give up the fight. But give us a mind to persevere, knowing that all things are working together for good. Heal our souls, heal our minds, and heal our bodies. But most importantly, we thank you for what you have already done. We thank you for what you're doing right now. And we thank you for what you're going to do. Give your name all the honor, all the praise, all the glory. In Jesus' name, let us say amen.